Hey YouTube, how you going? Just wanted to do another video because Tough Mutter, as in Tough Mutter HQ, actually responded to uh, my video. I did a video a couple of, oh, probably a month or so back now, called World's Toughest Mutter 2013, Rule Change and Entries Now Open. Uh, I'll put a link to that original video down below. Um, but nonetheless, I was stoked to actually see Tough Mudder uh, respond to my video. Uh, I guess it just goes to show that uh, they do watch YouTube. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Thanks, Tough Mudder. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I thought I'd do a video because it's only fair that I help spread the word of what they said and to clarify a few comments. Because uh, I guess in my video... Obviously, I made it straight after, and, you know, I'm passionate about Tough Mudder. I'm passionate about obstacle racing, and I want to see the sport grow. Um, and, obviously, Tough Mudder commented on that, so it's only fair that I read out what they say. So, hey, eventually, we wanted to clarify a few things. Cool. Number one, submitting a time that was in the top 5% goes against what Tough Mudder stands for. Mudder's pledge is... Um, Mudder's put teamwork and camaraderie before course time, and making... And us, sorry, and asking mutters to bypass that pledge to qualify doesn't make sense. So that's the view that they're taking uh, with regards to that whole getting rid of qualifying thing. And look, I guess it does make sense. You know, they're asking at the start of every run, every race. You know, we put, as it says, teamwork and camaraderie first. But then you're also saying only the top five percent qualify. So you kind of forced a race. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I understand why they're doing that, and as you know, as I said in my comment back to them, it is obviously their race, uh, or sorry, I should say challenge, their challenge, because uh, it's not a race, of course. Um, so if they want to do that, that's cool. I still am of the belief that qualifying in some form um, was important, it just gives the event a little bit of legitim more legitimacy in my eyes. But look, at the end of the day, whoever wins is is an amazing athlete. I guess I'm just talking about maybe the guys who are going to come 1,001 to 1,500. You know, I'd like to see those kind of people do five laps as a minimum or, you know, three or four laps even rather than have people dropping out after one, two or three if they're not as prepared or, or don't really understand the, the challenge that they're going to face. Um, but look, it's Tough Mudder's call, so, you know, that's the way they're going. And I guess in a, in a way it's... Um, good to see that they're sticking to what they feel is true and that's the whole teamwork camaraderie side of things um they go on to clarify in point two that their events aren't timed and there was never any way of quali uh, confirming qualifying times again um that is true uh, i'm not sure though if they ever did like check photos and stuff because i certainly know knew when i submitted my time that when i looked at the photos you know you fell into certain time groups so if they had a photo photographer on like the third last obstacle and you said you did it in two hours and there was no photos there or something, I mean, that would have been a somewhat way of checking. But again, you might not have gotten your photo taken. So no way of definitely checking that, yes, you did it within the time that you submitted it in. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, you know, up to you as the individual, to be honest. And... Um, I mean, I'd be of the opinion that, you know, if you're going to lie to get to World's Toughest Mudder, you're probably not good enough anyway to be there. You know, you can, you don't have to be the greatest runner to do kind of like a two-hour time uh, or even, you know, two hours 10, two hours 15 minutes at a Tough Mudder. Um, you know, with six months training, I reckon it's achievable for a lot of people. So there was no real reason to lie if you put in the training. Um, but look, it, that's a valid point as well. Can't take that away from Tough Mudder. There is no timing, so it was just, you know, user-based. Um, and without, you know, with people being allowed to put whatever they want, well, then that qualifying criteria was loose. And I did mention that, I think, in my original video. Um, point three, they're confident that opening the event up to everyone, anyone won't encourage average Joes to sign up. Um, World's Toughest Mudder is one of the most hardcore events on the planet, and if someone is crazy enough to sign up, more power to them. If anything, we think this will attract a higher caliber athlete who may not want to run a regular Tough Mudder in order to qualify. We're working hard to make sure all promotion of WTM emphasizes the point that this event is for expert athletes only. 
Alright, first of all, fantastic that your advertising is, you know, athlete toning. Alright, great. Attracting a higher caliber of athletes, all good. Um, I think cutting the first place prize money down may detract from that a little bit, but hey, it's Tough Mudder's call, and as I said in my first video, having prize money for the first five individually, I'm all for that. I think you can definitely see with what PAC's done um, and how the event does have a lot of running, you could get ultra runners um, coming to this event because it's a bloody big payday. Um, even with the, the first place cut down a little bit. But, it, it, you know, it's a good payday. So if you're a good ultra runner, um, or even a somewhat good ultra runner in America, and you think you can get past the obstacles, you know, you might as well show up, because you could be walking away with thousands of bucks. So I think that um, side of things, like trying to, with the prize pool and everything, encourage more elite athletes, that kind of thing, that's really good. I'm, I'm glad uh, that they're doing that. I still do think there will be average Joe signing up. Um, just, there's no two ways of cutting it. There are people out there you see at every event, whether it's a 5K run or a 100K um, run. There, there's people who do sign up without the training. Um, that's not to say that, you know, they're not entitled to, of course, it's their money, and if they think they can do it, they can, but you do still see average Joe sign up. Hopefully it's not as many as, you know, I feared. Um, and that takes me to point number four. Tough Mata said, the event is also being capped at 1,500 participants just like in the past. There will be no problems with course, course crowding and we will not make more money on the event this year. Okay, thumbs up and I apologize, Tough Mata, because I did say that you were doing this as like a money grab. Um, that's not the case. I'm glad that... Um, I was wrong in that instance because I don't want to see this event be a money grab. It shouldn't be a money grab. Um, and to be honest, you know, I know you guys don't make money on this event, but really you don't have to, in my opinion, because it's like an advertisement for your company. Um, people talk about it all year. People train about it all year. I mean, you know, I'm on Facebook and like a ton of my friends are all into obstacle racing and the guys who want to go to World's Toughest Mudder, all they talk about is obstacle racing and Tough Mudder. Um, and that's worth shitloads of advertising, so if you lose a bit of money on this event, I think you guys know that it, it's well worth it in the long run. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, with the cap being at 1,500 participants, I do like that. I, I don't want to see, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people there. Downside, I would not have gone to Tough Mudder last year, potentially, um, if this cap was in force and it was open to everyone. The reason why is by September, which is when I ran my first Tough Mudder, the event may have sold out. So then if I had done a really good time and like qualified under the old standards and then wanted to go because I was like, oh, you know, I came, you know, fourth. I came fourth in the Sunday wave. I came fourth. I want to go to World's Toughest Mudder. I want to test myself against the best, go to register, but it sold out because... It was open to everyone for a lot longer, but, you know, I just didn't really um, know whether I should go, or maybe you're someone out there who wants to get a normal Tough Mudder under your belt, or maybe you go a lot better than you thought, and then you're like, yes, I want to do the world's toughest. Well, if your race is later in the year, it, it may be sold out. So, in the long run, it might not matter. You might just miss out on 2013 and then get, in, get on board straight away for 2014. Um, but what I would like to say to Tough Mudder, if you watch this video, what about allocating spaces to countries? Um, I'm not saying all of them, but you could look at what you did last year um, and see where everyone came from and go, okay, we had maybe it was like 25, 30 people from Australia. Let's guarantee that there's going to be 50 this year because you're running more events. So we'll put 50 away for Australia. Then we'll look at England, we'll look at wherever else you guys are doing the runs and allocate spots based on that. Because if you want it to be the world's toughest mudder, you've got to have people from the world there. I think it's great, obviously, that it's, you know, your home is America, it's fine that it's based in America, I understand all that. But um, if in some way, I think it would be cool if you could say, look, we really want this to be a truly global event and we run countries in Europe, we run uh, we run we run challenges in Europe, we run challenges in Australia, wherever else, you know, 
let's say out of that 1,500, there's 50 here, 30 there because it's a smaller country or we've only got one event, but, and maybe it's only 500 out of that total 1,500 that are quarantined for international people, maybe only until like September or something. And then if no one's taking them or September, October, October might be a bit late, but you get what I mean. Quarantine those for a couple of months and then if they're not taken up by the international guys, then you can release them again to the people who are closer to home in North America. Um, I think that'd go a great way in terms of opening up the global field, as I said. And I also think what would be good is if the whole world's toughest mother was promoted more in the countries where you guys operate. Um, sure, if you're passionate about obstacle racing, you can find out about it. But how about at the individual Tough Mudder events, like have maybe a separate tent on World's Toughest Mudder, mention it on the, you know, MC, get MC to mention it, you know, you can still stay true to your pledge of teamwork and camaraderie, but you can say, hey, if you want to take this to another level, if you're a crazy nut, and want to do something completely insane, then look, register for the World's Toughest Mudder, you know, as part of the global um, Tough Mudder group, there's 50 spots that we want to see go to, you know, the craziest Aussies out there, so you can go over to America and show people from around the world how tough you really are. Something like that. Um, and point five is we lose money on World's Toughest Mudder. It will probably always be that way. Uh, as I said, well, um, I apologise for the kind of saying that, you know, it was money grab. It's good to see you're not making mo more money, um... As I said, I don't think it really matters if you lose money on this event because the marketing, I, I think, would far outweigh it. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely good to see um, that you're kind of, I guess, staying true to the event in a sense that it should be about a, a small group of people or relatively small group of people who want to really push themselves and test themselves in, in super tough conditions. Hopefully we can kind of work, see an international field there. Um... And, you know, maybe one day in the future you'll kind of take my suggestion on board and quarantine some spots or even just market it more over here in Australia. That'd be cool. Um, final point, hope to see you at Raceway Park in November. Well, I am passionate about Tough Mudder. Uh, you know, it, it literally was one of the best things I ever did with my life. I had a great adventure when I went over with my dad last year. Not sure what's going to happen this year. I've got a couple of things on the horizon um, not really related to running. I'll let everyone in on that later on. Um, I really would love to go. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. If I'm not there this year, maybe it's next year. I've been training hard. I've been training for like the last, ever since I got off the plane from America, I've been training for World Stuff as Mudder. That's all I'm, that's all I, um, have been training towards, really. A few ultra marathons and stuff that I want to do as well, but primarily World Stuff as Mudder, that's where it's at for me be great to go back. I met some amazing people over there. If you're thinking of going um, and you're up in the air, just do it. it it's a life-changing experience. Um, it was awesome on every level. And I, I really do encourage people to do crazy shit like this. It's just fun. So that's my kind of response to Tough Mudder. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for commenting, Tough Mudder. Um, hopefully you see this video and can comment too because uh, it'd be great, and as always guys, if you're the average Joe or someone else out there, you can comment too, um, and like, share, subscribe, do everything you have to, thanks again, bye.